that can make it today, welcome. Those of you that are watching at home, welcome too. I'm glad that you're being safe. Um, please comment and share the stream so that others can enjoy with you. We're going to get started with some worship. This is no performance, Lord, I pray it's worship. Chasing feelings, that's not why I'm singing. You're the reason for my song. And I only wanna sing if I sing with everything, if I sing for you. With a broken heart, 
Let your love be the shining light Breaking chains that were holding me You sent your son down and set me free And everything of this world will be I'm pressing on till I see your face I will live that you will be I won't stop till your kingdom come Cause you are, you are, you are my freedom We lift you higher, lift you higher Your love, your love, your love never ending Oh, oh, oh You are not in us Nothing can take your place You are Face to face, 
lost and wander out the guide of time and space. The universe declares your praise, singing holy, holy is your
let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery with its row upon row of simple white markers, bearing crosses or stars of David, they add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom. Today we pray that those who lie here have found peace with their creator and we resolve that their sacrifice will always be remembered by a grateful nation. The fallen give silent witness to the price of our liberty and our nation honors them this day and every day. Well, with Memorial Day uh, coming up, or right this weekend and tomorrow, I guess, um, we want to remember those who have sacrificed uh, much for us to have the freedoms that we have in our country, uh, that we enjoy and sometimes take for granted, maybe. Um, so it's a great time to, to remember that and also uh, say thank you also to um, first responders and, and the healthcare workers. This may be a time that we begin to more. more uh, moralize them, memorize, have memory for them <laughs> uh, because the sacrifices they're making also. And so I just want to pray um, real quick for uh, us as we remember these things. And you can pray at home online uh, with us. Uh, God, I just lift you up. Uh, there are so many people who have sacrificed their lives, men and women, to um, give us the freedoms we have in this country. Uh, sometimes we forget that. And God, I just pray that we won't and that they will be remembered, and, and those who maybe don't have family to remember them, we can give them a special thought to, God, because we know that every single person is on your mind, and they're special to you, so they should be special to us. Also, we remember at this time also that the, the most sacrifice given was by you and sending your son to die for us, and we were thankful for that uh, as we think about sacrifice. Um, be with us throughout our service. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want to welcome you to Sister Valley Church. I uh, hope they're tuning in online. Also, we did a reopen today, so there are a few faces in here. It's great to see everybody uh, in person who did come, uh, who braved uh, that. And so I um, want to welcome you to the service today. We, we have a vision, and our church wants to do this. So at, we want to be a church that the unchurched love to experience. Uh, that's our vision. That's what we want to do. Um, and that's at home or however that plays out. We have a mission, and I can say it again. You can say it with me. Uh, following Jesus, changing together. I've had to change that for the last 10 weeks, so it's glad to, good to have people uh, to be able to say that with us today. We are a church that prays together, so um, if you want to have any prayer requests or any cons prayers that you want to put out there, or maybe you want to get the prayer list, you can do that with the link in the comments. Uh, so uh, we won't be passing out connection cards today, so if you have prayer requests, you still need to hop online sistervalleychurch.com, and uh, put in your prayer requests or go on the Facebook link. Uh, we will continue to do f online family content, so we're super excited about that. Hopefully you guys have been using that um, whenever you're at home uh, so that your family can continue to grow in Christ and, and uh, use those resources. So that's continuing on, uh, especially since we're not able to have children's church here at, at church. Um, and if you make a decision today or you have any comments, concerns, uh, any of those things, we want to let we want to know about that. So fill out the connection card uh, in the link on Facebook uh, Live, or you can go to our website and do that. Right now, we're going to have a time of offering, um, and so there's three ways to give. You can do it online through our new app uh, or by mail. And if you're here today, you can actually just we won't pass around the offering plate, uh, but there is an offering plate in the back. You just drop off your offering there if you'd like. Uh, try to make it as easy as possible for everybody. 
Uh, but this is part of our worship service. It's how we give back to God what is already his, but it, with a cheerful heart, hopefully. And want to say thank you for during this time that we've been able to uh, continue financially. And we are so grateful for that uh, because we are have a vision and a mission here uh, at Sensor Valley Church. And you guys make that happen through your contributions uh, and support. And so thank you for that. Let's pray for our offering uh, at this time. Uh, Lord, I just lift you up. And uh, you are doing amazing things, and you continue to do amazing things. And, and when a time, of, a time of uncertainty, you've given us hope. You always do that. And God, I pray that you'll take this offering and uh, plug it into wherever you need it to uh, so that we can see the most glory given to you, God. And th I pray for Pastor Allen as he comes and speaks to us as, in this message today, that it would be your words, God, and that they would penetrate our heart and change our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Allen. We're glad that you joined us. We have a few folks here actually present today, which is always nice. Uh, most of you are watching online, which we appreciate. And we're in a series called Ideal Family. This is week three. You can catch up on the other last two, either on Facebook or our website or YouTube. Today's topic is common cause, and that'll make a little more sense in a few minutes. Um, in this series, we're comparing real and ideal. Uh, there's no ideal family. I haven't met one anyway, where uh, <clears throat> everything's perfect. Uh, but God's Word and, and God gives us the ideal. And the problem is, when we look at the real versus the ideal, we kind of feel like failures. I know I do. I don't love my life like I should. I, you know, I wasn't a, you know, a perfect parent. And so my tendency is to want to lower the standard so I don't feel bad. And Jesus did just the opposite. He jacked up the ideal. He said it's not just wrong to kill somebody, murder somebody. It's wrong just to hate somebody. So Jesus was comfortable, and so consequently we need to be comfortable with the tension between this high ideal and, and, and the real and continually strive to get closer and so that's what this series is about, and we're trying to help folks do that. <clears throat> so today is a topic that I know that we all have in common. Well, I've never met a family that didn't have this. And that's the issue of conflict. Fighting, arguing, fussing, complaining, whatever terminology you want to use. We all have to deal with that in all relationships. Uh, especially, it's critical in the family situation. Now, hopefully you've figured this out somewhere along the line. We've taught this in the past. When it comes to family especially, though, when you win an argument, you don't really win anything. If I have an argument with my wife and I win, that means my wife did what? She lost. Do I want my wife to lose? No. And so I haven't won anything. Now, you can win other places. You can win in court. If you win your court case, that's a good thing. Uh, you could maybe win at work where, you know, your, your plan got picked over somebody else's plan. But in family, winning is not winning. The other thing that complicates this and makes it so emotional is that we process conflict differently. And there's a few uh, general categories of peop way people uh, uh, process conflict. Uh, first is the peacemakers. And if you have a peacemaker in your family, that's kind of difficult, frustrating, because peace is more important than the conflict. Peace is more important than the issue. And so sometimes the issue doesn't get resolved because all the person wants is peace. Another category is the sulker. The sulker will deal with the conflict, maybe or maybe not, but then it goes, they get 
they go around and sulk about it for days afterwards. Then there's the stuffer. Now, stuffer you can identify easily this way. When you say, uh, is everything okay? They say, yeah, fine. Are you sure? Yeah, fine. Well, you know it's not fine by their attitude, but they've stuffed down their feelings and aren't sharing them. Then there's the litigator. These are the folks that love to argue. They love to discuss things. They love to prove their point. In fact, they will keep trying to prove their point until you just kind of give up. <laughs> and th so they usually win the argument. It'll be the again, somebody has to lose. And then there's the screamer. Now, I like to talk about the screamer. My sister's here, <laughs> uh, one of my sisters. And in our family, we were screamers. Uh, we yelled, uh, whatever terminology, we raised our voice. And uh, my wife's family was not that way. And so when she first experienced my family, she thought we were all crazy. What did, what did I get myself into? But for us, we would get it all out, and then 15 minutes later, we'd be fine. But she's still thinking, these folks, what have I gotten myself into? So we all process conflict differently, so that's what makes it, part of the reason it makes it so complicated. Now, we're going to talk about a principle today that really, I think, will be helpful. Along with the principle last week, I think these are two huge things that can help you and your family, make them healthier. We like the word healthier. And that was this, ask yourself or ask every member in your family at least once a day, what can I do to help? What can I do to help? Now, my wife and I, in the middle of the week, we realized we hadn't been asking ourselves each other this. And it's now because it's more of a habit in our family. Uh, and we just do it. And so we don't literally say it. We just kind of do it as a habit. So Friday evening, about 5 o'clock, I'm going to go to watch Sports Center. I still watch Sports Center, even though there's not much sports. Hopefully there will be sports. Anyway, and so I, I'm walking up the steps, and I just say to my wife, who's gone into the kitchen to prepare dinner, uh, what can I do to help? And she said, well, you can make the salad. And then she followed that up with, you didn't think I was going to say that, did you? And I said, well, I didn't know what you were going to say. I expected you to say something. Usually it's, you know, get something off a high shelf for me or something. Something I can take care of in a minute. Well, for the next 15 or 20 minutes, I'm washing and chopping vegetables for our salad. And there was four salads because Andrea and Bud were there. And in our house, we don't eat this side salads. We eat plates of salad. So I was busy until dinner was ready making salad for the four of us. But I told her I enjoyed it. I don't normally do anything in the kitchen with food. But I enjoyed making the salad, and it was helpful to her. So hopefully you practice that, and if you didn't, that you'll start. And if, even if you did, that you'll continue. This is a lifelong asking family members, what can I do to help? <clears throat> now, we're going to look at conflict. And we're going to look at something James, the brother of Jesus, wrote. And he's going to tell us that there's one source, one common cause of conflict. Now, let me warn you, you all, everybody's going to push back on this. And, and right now, you're all thinking, no, there isn't. You know, it's my wife's fault, it's my kid's fault, it's my husband's fault, it's my parents' fault, you know. Uh, but Paul... Uh, James, excuse me, not Paul, is going to give us profound insight until the, about the source of conflict. In fact, he starts chapter 4 with this question. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? What is it? And like I said, we all have these things. Break down into category of blame. We blame other people, right? Uh, my wife, you know, only knows how to subtract. She doesn't know how to add in the checkbook. Uh, my kids don't know how to clean up the room. Uh, they, don't have, they won't do their homework. Uh, my husband won't, you know, fix things around the house. We just blame, blame, blame other people. And we have this feeling that if they just do what I say, <laughs> then we'd all be happy, right? If they would clean up the room and my, you know, my wife wouldn't spend so much money or whatever it might be. But the reality is that's not true. In fact, I'll put it on the screen. As long as you blame others for your unhappiness, you will never be happy. You are handing your happiness to the other person when you do that. 
Now, if I asked you, do you want to hand your ha happiness over to your kids? Do you want to hand your happiness over to your parents? Do you want to hand your happiness over to your spouse? You would say no. But that's exactly what you do, you and I do, when we start blaming. In any relationship, especially in family. <clears throat> we use phrases like, if you would only do this. If you only wouldn't do this, then everything would be fine. We'd be happy. There wouldn't be no conflict. But until we learn the principle that James is going to teach us, you're not going to, you have no other option but to hand your happiness to your other, other people and other family members. In fact, blaming never solves anything. So if I say, ah, it's your fault, even if you say, yeah, it's my fault, have we solved anything? <laughs> the issue is still the issue. And so uh, you got to really fight against that tendency to, to, to uh, push blame on other people. Now, again, as I said earlier, as we look at this, our natural tendency is going to push back and to argue and to disagree. So that, you know, it, try not to do that, but let me say these are God's words through James. They're not my words. I'm just <laughs> sharing them with you. So he asked the question, what causes the quarrels and fights among you? He says, don't they come from the evil desires that work within you? In you, not in your spouse, not in your kids, not in your parents. He's telling us the root cause isn't them, it's you, or me. So that's the source. All conflict comes from inside of me, or of you. And it spills out <laughs> that bad, evil, unkind desire spills out in our relationships, and that causes conflict. And once you and I get this, when we comprehend this, when we understand this, automatically the temperature in the room, the temperature in the conflict is going to go down. So he goes on. He says, <laughs> you want what you don't have. Well, yeah, I want my kids to clean up the room. I want my wife not to spend so much money. I want my husband to fix the things around the house. I want my parents to realize it's 2020, not the 1980s, uh, 1980s not 1880. Um, and we get this attitude, well, especially if your family is Jesus followers, my kid, I deserve my kids to obey me. It's in the Bible, right? I deserve my husband to love me. It's in the Bible. Uh, they promise this in the marriage vows. So, yeah, I want something that I don't have. Now, I have a, a daughter, <laughs> but any of you that have kids, and if your kids aren't teenagers yet, one of your challenges is going to be when that daughter or son brings home their first boyfriend or girlfriend. So there's the ideal and there's the real. Well, I'd never really thought of it like that before. Right, and I'm not saying it would be easy, but that would be the way that I would go about solving world hunger. Brilliant. But I've got to finish medical school before I can worry about any of that. <laughs> oh, there she is. Will Thomas, hey. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. Oh, the pleasure was all mine, sir. So where are you two headed tonight? Uh, well, we will be spending the majority of the evening volunteering at the local homeless shelter. And before that, I will be leading a Bible study at my grandmother's nursing home. So, wow. So what time can I expect her home? Is 9 o'clock too late? What's up, bro? <laughs> the name is Phoenix. Here to pick up your daughter and stuff. Okay, hope you've had that, had that experience or will not have that experience. Oh, sake, so we're in this challenge of wanting something that we're not getting. So James goes on. He says, <clears throat> you want what you don't have, so what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to scheme, and I don't think he meant literally kill. It's kind of a... Uh, analogy, 
um, to get it. So I want this. I'm not getting it. So I'm going to figure out how to get it. Even if it, and I think what he means is, kills the relationship. Brings so much harm to the relationship, it kind of ends or it's over. Now, it just seems almost stupid to do that, right? But maybe you, you have done this in the past. You've killed a relationship. that You no longer have a relationship with that person um, because they didn't give you something you wanted. You've crushed their spirit. We talked about we need to uh, believe week one or two. Uh, you need to break your child's will but not crush their spirit. And so you can crush a person's spirit with your words and with your desire and, and plans and schemes to get what you want. And we, our, our pushback was, well, I just want them to reach their potential. You know, I want my kids to, you know, uh, to be good students because they reach their potential, et cetera, et cetera. But not to the point of killing or cr the relationship or crushing the other spirit. Now, it's interesting. We do this the most with the ones we love the most, right? I could care less if my, <laughs> if my neighbor's grandkids do their homework or not but I'm really concerned if my, my grandkids do their homework. But what James is trying to teach us is it's not about them. It's about you. You're the one that's making the schemes. You're the one that's killing. And he goes on, your jealousy or your <clears throat> envy of what others have and you can't get it. Now, it's one thing to desire it, there's another thing to be frustrated because you can't get it. Now, if we would just stop and pause before we get into this argument or conflict or in the midst of this conflict and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not getting something that I want. Again, that'll bring the temperature in the, in the discussion down. And so he continues. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them, okay? If you're not going to give it to me, I'm going to take it. Or I'm going to try and take it. I'm going to try and force you <laughs> to do what I, what I want. Now, when he's really talking about self or our selfishness, and a, a big key here is this, self or selfishness is never satisfied. It's an appetite. Now, what happens when you feed an appetite? The more you feed an appetite, what happens to it? Does it go away? Well, temporarily, but when you, the more you feed an appetite, the more it grows. That's why people need... Uh, you know, a, a bigger fix. Uh, what got them excited in the past or what got them high in the past doesn't, you know. What satisfied you physically or usually when we eat, we get more than satisfied, we get to a place where we're full. But if you keep eating till you're stuffed, eventually you can eat more to get stuffed, right? So we need to realize that self is never satisfied. It grows when we feed it, so we need not to do that, obviously. So we're going to give you the question to deal with conflict. <clears throat> and that's this question. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the midst of the, of the conversation or before you begin the conversation, you can say this out loud or say to yourself, you know what? Part of the problem is me. I'm not getting what I want. So I can say this to my spouse. You know what part of the problem is? I realize I'm not getting what I want. Again, the, <laughs> the temperature will go down. You know, I wish, I wish you would do this. I wish you wouldn't do that. But no, no. Part of the problem is my wishes. So uh, one way to illustrate this was, is with a, with a graph. <laughs> uh, so let me ask you, in this conflict that you're having, try and process it this way. What percentage of the problem is me? So I'm going to give you a a suggestion. It's usually mostly them, right? You might say, no, it's all them. But let's, let's just say, it's mostly them. All right, I'll take responsibility for 15% of the problem. But most people say, no, 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 it's all them. So let me try and compromise with you. <laughs> Can you agree that 2%, 2% 2 of the problem is you? 98% is your kid's fault or your spouse's fault or, or, your, or your parents' fault. Can, can I get you to agree with that? And this is even hard for us, isn't it? You know why it's hard? I, I love this little phrase. If you own a slice, you have to be nice. You, yeah, 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 part of the problem is me. 
again, the temperature comes down, the tension is lessened. And again, remind you that if you win, nobody wins. If you win, somebody loses. So, another way to say it's this. Relationally speaking, the best defense is no defense. Okay. And we like to use these phrases like, you never, you always. Well, it's not true for one thing, but in the midst of the heat of the argument, we say these things. And <laughs> we've told each other, my wife and I, not to use these anymore. And we don't, if we see, catch ourselves doing it, we almost laugh about it. Because we know it's not true. So, we have objections. And I know, I said up front, you're going to have objections, you're going to have pushback. Again, they promise, they vow, the Bible tells me they should do this. And our, our, <laughs> what we're really saying, it's not fair, right? It's not fair. Now, we only like fair when it favors us. You go into a Walmart parking lot, and you pull right into a parking space right next to the door. You don't say, God, it's not fair. You say, thank you, God. But somebody else has been circling for 10 minutes and, and can't get a parking space close by. Fair ended in the Garden of Eden, okay? We often say, life's not fair. <clears throat> so again, it's what I want. Whether it's fair or not, <laughs> technically is ir irrelevant. So we've got this area of conflict. What do I do about it? Now, this point, up to this point, if you're not a Jesus follower, follower we, we truly believe this, these principles can help. They'll be a big help in your family. But this last part is going to be just for Jesus followers, okay? He says, you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. So before you got into that conflict or in the midst of conflict, did you stop and say, okay, wait a minute. God, I'm not getting this. I think I deserve it. This is what I want. Uh, what do I knew, knew, need to do? Or what needs to happen? me to get it. So before you get into your blaming, before you get into the heated part, pray that prayer. Now normally our prayer is what? God change them. Make them do what I want. But no, no, he said, no, no, don't focus on them, focus on you. Because what happen, often happens is this. I've kind of learned this over, over the years. When you're not getting what you want, sometimes you're trying to squeeze it out of somebody who doesn't have it in them now to give. I'll give you an example. When we do marriage counseling, my wife and I, we learned this when we took marriage counseling. Uh, they called day, caring day ex exercises. And we asked each couple who, relationship's not good, to just do one act of kindness for your spouse each day. So I'll give you an example. The wife may say, I would like my husband to make the bed. He never makes the bed. I have to always make the bed. And he agrees, I'll make the bed. So we come back a week later and we say, okay, so you made the bed every day this week. He said, no, I didn't make the bed all week. But you said you would. Now, as a counselor, I can get frustrated and say, you said you would. But what I've realized over the years is, emotionally, whatever term you want to use, they are not able to do it. And so we usually get the assignment again the next week. And we pray and we say, you think you can do it? And I say, I'll try. And Sometimes they do it, or partially do it, sometimes they don't, <laughs> by the next week. But eventually, three weeks in, four weeks in, they're, they're able, emotionally able to do it. So you need to realize that in your conflict with your kids, we have two of our four kids were messies. No matter how much we discipline them to clean up their room, their mess, rooms are still messy. My wife would go in and she gets so frustrated, she'd go and clean the rooms up for them. They're not necessarily capable of doing it at that maturity level, right? emotionally maturity level at that time. Now, as we finish up this morning, I'm going to warn you, you're going to hate what James says next. And when you ask, you don't get it because, you get that up, because, why aren't you getting it? Because they won't give it to you? No, 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 no. Because your motives are all wrong. And you only want it to give you pleasure. Now, pleasure is fine. God desires for us to enjoy life. But he says, you're not getting it 
because your motives are wrong. One translation says, your prayers are sickly, or you're praying sickly prayers, or selfish prayers. So either you're not praying, or you're praying, asking for the wrong things, or maybe even asking for the right things, but with the wrong <laughs> motives. So what is he saying? He said, examine your heart. What's the reason? Examine your heart. It's more about you than it is about them. So again, back to our, uh, our key uh, question here. In that midst of that conflict, or even before, you know what part of the problem is? <laughs> I'm not getting what I want. Again, lowers the heat, lowers the pressure. There's the ideal and there's the real. There's what I want and what I get and what I have. So I think James is saying, God, do in me what you need to do. My part, even if it's only 2%, <laughs> my part in this conflict. And hopefully you'll develop this new habit of dealing, when you're dealing with conflict, to think, to state, you know what part of the problem is? I'm not getting what I want. And we usually try and give you something to think about, some homework or whatever, and this is a tough one. Hopefully you'll spend some time thinking about it. Who in your family, who in my family, is suffering? Do you want your family members to suffer? I don't think so. You love them. So who in your family is suffering only because you, because I am not getting what I want? So prayerfully consider that and ask that question this week. So let me pray with you and then we'll let you go until next week. It's been fun having a few people join us in person today. Most of you, I realize, are online. Let's pray. Father God, thank you. We thank you for Paul, uh, give me, excuse me, James' words. Uh, but they're kind of tough to, to take, tough to swallow. Uh, we like to blame other people. Uh, we don't like to deal with our own issues. Uh, I thank you for this question that we can ask and this realization, hey, <laughs> I'm not getting what I want. And hopefully it'll help bring the temperature down and consequently help resolve the conflicts or get our conflicts uh, closer to re resolution and our families closer to healthy. And as always, we want to pray for anyone that's not a Jesus follower yet. Uh, our prayer is that you'll soon, if not right now, become one. You'll step across that line. You'll see the wisdom in, in what God says about us and teaches us to do. And you'll say, yeah, uh, I want to accept God's gift of uh, forgiveness and salvation. My sins will be forgiven. I'll have an intimate personal relationship with God through Jesus. Uh, all you have to do is, is pray that prayer or, or, or just think those thoughts. And God will come in through the Holy Spirit and the Bible describes it as you'll be born again. You'll have a have new life. Um, God, most of us are Jesus followers and these are tough words because as <laughs> we don't have no options. These are your marching orders, your instructions. So God, let us hopefully not push back but say hey, yes. I want a healthy family. I want less conflict. I want conflict, conflict resolution. So we thank you for these tools. We thank you for these words. And we look forward to our families being healthier. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We do have a way for you to respond to today's service online. We pray that you will do that. Feedback, decisions you might have made, obviously prayer requests. And we look forward to you joining us again next week. Thank you.